Welcome to Tuska 2019 and uh, this time we have a little bit different artist. We don't have a band guy or gal. What we have actually here a comic book artist. And now you might be asking like, Cherry, why in the hell you have a comic book artist? You could be, uh, I don't know, interviewing bands playing crash. Stop. Right there. You will soon find out why we have a comic book guy. Mr. JP or JP Honen, uh, welcome on Rauta. How is Tuska treating you? It's been good so far. I've been here for about three hours, but it's been super fun. I uh, met a lot of uh, fans and uh, signed books and done interviews, so it's been all good. Now we need to answer the very question I basically made there. Why are you here? What is your connection to <laughs> yeah. metal festival since yeah. you are not a musician? Yeah, well, uh, I've done metal comics uh, since uh, um, my graphic novel Perkeros. Uh, and uh, now I think most most of my fans know me from uh, Bielzebubs, which is a weekly comic strip uh, that's appeared on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like social media sites. And uh, it's been collected into uh, different language editions now. And uh, yeah, it's it's become a beast of its own because we have uh, an album out as well. If I understood correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, but it started as a kind of a side project. Yeah. It's kind of a therapy project even. Yeah. Can you enlighten about this birth? Yeah. In 2015, I was uh, still suffering from a burnout, and I noticed that when I went to uh, to my studio to do work, I was getting fixed or stuck on like details that really didn't matter in terms of um, um, s- the script or or dialogue or or the artwork and stuff like that. And I uh, I really felt that I need a project or something. Which would help me, um, uh, like loosen up in a way. So, for some reason, I I decided to participate in Ink- Inktober, which is uh, basically an online challenge for artists and whomever wants to join, where you have to illustrate uh, some drawing each day of October and just publish it online with the hashtag Inktober, and. I saw that as an opportunity to just force myself to throw, like, puke something on paper. And, uh, yeah, for some reason, I uh, the first thing I improvised were these two black metal dudes that were commenting on a shirt which had vomit on it. And they were super fun to draw. It was exactly what I was looking for, something crude, fast, and uh, fun for me. So I made... Uh, black metal and Satanism uh, loose theme for the whole Inktober and uh, I think I made maybe 20 20 strips or so for for the challenge and needed to call it quits because I was focusing on uh, other other projects that at the time but the characters sort of started nagging in the back of my head that there it was fun there's something there I need to think about it more and uh, yeah, come September 2016, I started publishing them. Uh, I had redrawn some of the strips, but I started publishing them on a weekly basis online, just for me, basically, uh, as a sort of a breather in between all the other projects I was doing. And yeah, in in six months, it really started taking off, like uh, sort of. Went, went viral, if I can <laughs> say that. So, here I am. And suddenly, magically, beers appear. I don't know what's going on, but wow. Anyway, now the evil question. I don't want to be mean, but what needs to happen for a comic book artist to suffer a burnout? Um, well, you basically do all freelance projects you can get. Uh, hog too much work. Uh, you need to be over analytical about your stuff. Uh, a bit of a detail freak, um, and you need to work 14 to 16 hours a day. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, for one and a half years, and then realize that this was a dumb move. 
So, so that was sort of uh, what I did from 2010 to 2013. And uh, then we got our first kid and and yeah. <laughs> the, Suddenly there's too much on the table. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, I can't work like that anymore. I need to like pick up the pace. And then when you went uh, to the studio, you were tired. When you went back home, you were tired. Always fe- felt that you were in the wrong place and everything. So, uh, plus there was a lot of like personal stuff uh, in the family and everything like going on. It always like, it's a mix of things. So, so yeah, that was basically how I got the burnout. How, how is your family, how is the, how are they supporting the idea of going like off road and suddenly getting into a kind of a success? They're, they've been super supportive. Of course, it's, it's still a little, hard because uh like honestly um Beelzebub's is hogging up 80 90 percent of my time but it's not bringing that much income so so it's a bit of a ink come no, kind of a wordplay <laughs> yeah it's uh so it's a gamble right now like i'm putting it all in like seeing if this actually leads in into something like which i could make i i I'm not craving to get like millions, which would be nice. But anyway, have a new Tesla. Yes. <laughs> yeah, or just be able to like hire hire your own little slaves to do the drawings and everything. But um, but yeah, it would be nice to somehow get a normal income and focus on your project without needing to always get a new burnout from doing 12 to 14 hours days. So. So yeah, uh, I'm in in that limbo right now. Talking about limbos, you are all also in a very kind of a dangerous uh, area when we're talking about drawing cartoons out of uh, Satan and uh, witchcraft and black metal, whatever. I mean, there's always certain certain amount of religious people which, which are easily offended, and they are always making yeah. a big noise about. Yeah. All about thing, all kind of things, but also because the audience in extreme metal, I know because being being part of that mm. scene in a yeah. way, yeah. they are very um, kind of a judgmental when it comes to adding humor and funny elements to their so precious unholy scene. <laughs> yeah. So you're like you have to tread lightly, but then again, if you would tread too lightly, your comics would be boring. So yeah. how you yeah. deal with this kind of a judgmental mindset and mm. kind of a feedback yeah well like you said i'm fucked either, either way because <laughs> i'm probably pissing off people both sides of the fence but like i really don't give a shit <laughs> so, so i'm just like focusing on my own thing and uh to be honest that's all, everything that like matters uh i feel that i'm doing something uh new And it's it's from from my heart, and it's it's something um, I I found that is interesting. Like I like black black metal. I like Looney Tunes. <laughs> like why let's, not combo? <laughs> yeah, why not co- combine these two things and have fun with it? And uh, I feel that a lot of people get what I'm doing, so so it's good. Uh, there's only been a few few emails like uh, or or messages where they're absolutely pissed about things but those can't be helped like uh, from both sides like religious people and then uh, the purists in in black metal but uh, so far it's been good and uh, I mean I'm doing the devil's work anyhow because I'm like uh, sort of attracting people to the dark side with with the comics and uh, Both the comics and music is probably like a gateway to, to uh, the pure, the true cult things. Your comics are very nice to look at. I mean, they are beautiful shapes, and you're doing brilliant job with just black and white and all that stuff. But also, you have these kind of uh, funny jokes and remarks with the text, you know, the dialogue and all that stuff. But obviously, you need a source. Uh, for that writing process in order to kind of make those comics so you have to have a level of understanding about the scene and the bands and all that stuff so how deep you dig for the kind of a inspiration and the ideas for that stories and strips well i've been digging into or tapping into that vein since i was 13 so it's like 
<laughs> and you're now how old? Uh, 38. So, so it's not like I, I need to do a lot of research because it's all, all there in a way. Uh, whenever I'm trying to come up with stupid puns or wordplay, it, I have that everything like as a back catalog in my in my head in a way. So, um, of course, so that you don't get rep like repetitive, uh, you you need to do some background work and try and find new new ways to uh, joke around and everything. So, uh, yeah, I do some research, but. Um, Piazza Pops is basically me pouring in things which I like and which I'm interested in, like starting from like Dante's Inferno and uh, Doré's uh, illustrations for that and uh, uh, Lovecraft and uh, black metal, death metal, um, Adam's family, well, like everything basically. And I'm, I'm just, uh, well, doing doing the best I can <laughs> with that. How many stories or characters, up to you, to decide how, how to answer that, are based on real events or persons? Not really, like, any. There, of course, there, there have been cameos in the comics and stuff like that. But um, the characters have, uh, like, written them themselves in a way. So, uh, of course, there are... <laughs> some some comics that uh, are based on real experiences for example since I have three kids now uh, there are quite a few comics about sleep deprivation and kids waking up and everything like that so so those are are usually uh, the things that come into mind firsthand but um, plus also the the sort of awkward uh, awkward things you need to go through when you're starting up a band and uh, you make all the mistakes uh, possible and uh, nothing works and everything uh, I have I have some experience about that so so it's it's nice to be able to throw those in even though I, I used quite a bit of that material for uh, Perkeros or Sing No Evil already Have you gotten context from or ideas from bands like, hey, you should include our story there because we have great stuff which could totally fit your stories? Or have bands been like, hey, please, could you tell me a story about this and this character, like anonymously or whatever? Mm. No, I haven't gotten those. Um, would you Would you like to have? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a fine line between uh, because I have like ideas jotted down already. So if I'd get an idea from someone someone else they might see see it as um, if it if it would happen to somehow like there'd be a parallel to their story they'd think that I'm I'm using their material and not giving them credit so uh, in a way I, I prefer to just like keep my head down and do it from my from my own brain but of course like uh, there are a lot of good stories <laughs> so so I'm uh, It would be nice to nice to hear some some uh, weird shit from others as well. So it would become a sort of like generic, uh, like a what's the word, like a pool of uh, ideas. How much uh, like cover art uh, or band interviews or even logos inspire you in the terms of? I mean, we all know we who have been in the extreme metal long enough we all know that there are these memes and jokes about hey there's a pile of um, I don't know cut you know branches of stock and like it looks like a death metal logo yeah, yeah, we all know yeah, the stories yeah. so how much these kind of uh, stuff inspire you I try not to like plow through that because I like I said I, I want to like come up with that stuff myself and it would be really crippling if I started like doing research on like who's if some word plays or these images have been done already because then I'd like be sort of limiting my uh, creativity yeah yeah like choice is what I can do so uh, I just hope that <laughs> that I'm a I'm able to uh, maybe put the same same jokes or ideas in a new context and uh, that there's something personal about it still so it's not just uh just uh reusing the same same imagery or or jokes or ideas and stuff so yeah i i wouldn't know 
what's been done. Since you've been doing this quite a while, do you have any absolute favorites? Like, this the best strip I made so far is about... No, I don't. <laughs> no favorite kids in <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, it's really difficult to say. There are some panels which still like crack me up that I I remember that I had a good time or or I feel feel that I really nailed uh uh some expression or something. And one is uh when you have God peeking like behind the window, like God is always watching. So that still feels that okay, well. This was good. Um uh, but yeah, um yeah, it's like picking your favorite kid. You can't do that. Any regrets regrets or disappointments like in hindsight like I probably should have not done it. There have been a few like brain farts which uh, ha- haven't been like intentional. I I've, uh, and not necessarily in like a punchline or anything, but I've incorporated something which I've just like improvised on the spot and not th- thought about it like clearly and uh then it's uh, ended up like insulting people that whom i've like there is no no intention to insult and stuff like that and um uh, because i'm i'm creating it pretty much on the fly so maybe maybe stuff like that but but nothing nothing severe anyhow um I, I think I have pretty good judgment of like like stuff that's uh I don't draw stuff that I don't feel funny and and uh and and I don't draw stuff that I might find funny but I I feel that it's not like uh it's not anything I want to endorse or something so Your comic books have, or comic strips, have also evolved into a band yeah. that needs to be addressed. Mm-hmm. Why? I mean, how this happened? Yeah. Um, when I decided to start doing uh, Beelzebub's online, I obviously wanted to uh, incorporate uh, some elements that I couldn't do in print because I'd been doing comics for magazines, news, newspapers, and stuff since 2003. Mm like doing a web comic was a new thing and presented new um like options and things you could do with it uh, possibilities uh so the idea at first was to make maybe 20 second clips with loose animation and and like uh like music that I'd compose completely on myself and they wouldn't have to be longer than half a minute or whatever but uh things sort of like <laughs> snowballed since uh I one of my musician friends asked if if I'd thought about ma- making music and I explained to him that well I have like these storyboards for like short music videos or like snippets of of one and yeah he was He said that yeah, uh, I can look into my like my drive and see if if he has like some riffs or melodies or whatever demos we could use for that. And at first we were just like juggling the idea together, but uh, at some point he sort of prodded me and said that maybe we're thinking too small. Like, sh- shouldn't we make like a just like one proper song or even? maybe the next day like maybe we should do a, f- a few and like make a demo out of it and i was like oh, well if you want if you have the time and everything i don't want to like take up too much of your your time and make this a chore and uh yeah we got uh like a sort of <laughs> inside crew for that and uh And yeah, uh, sent sent the demo over to uh, Century Media, and they were immediately on board. Like, okay, uh, when can we call you and stuff like that? So I was, of course, like flipping flipping out because once again I had sort of like uh, gone into a tree, like ass first. So uh, yeah, things sort of like uh, unexpectedly snowballed. What can you tell about these secret members of the band? It, they're the characters, like read it from the book <laughs> or online. <laughs> That's all I can comment, really. Why so secretive? 
it, I, I think it's it's more fun that way. Like, I'd rather support the idea of embracing the characters instead of like doing your Sherlock Holmes stuff and like trying to find out who's who because um, the minute you start thinking about the real musicians behind the band, it sort of, uh, to me at least, it sort of diminishes the idea of uh, the mystique or the sort of mm, the cartoon characters at least like when I watch like an animated movie I, I want to believe that uh, an animated character sounds like himself and not think about okay this is voiced by Keanu Reeves or whomever so uh, I'd like to like embrace that illusion instead of thinking about a bit too much about what what goes on like under the hood or behind the scenes i'm i'm sure there'll be a time when uh, we reveal the cards and like showcase how how it all like clicked together and who did what and everything but like why not just enjoy the ride for now but that kind of uh stops you doing live shows not necessarily Let's see. <laughs> so you have some plans in order to... I have some plans, yes. But uh, the biggest problem is, of course, the financial problem. Because uh, we need a lot of pre-production. Because even like a 45-minute gig would involve a lot of animated content. And uh, yeah, animation isn't exactly cheap. So, <laughs> so it feels like we have this thing which is... Uh, has been received very well but then we've like shot each other in the foot and <laughs> then we start like going on the road like uh, we've made it pretty difficult on ourselves but at least we're doing something different so which comes first nowadays that is the comic books and the strips or the music uh, like i can't say it's it's hand in hand in a way it's i've stopped thinking about it as a comic i think of it as a sort of cross media project in a way because um the the comic is a thing on on its own the music is a thing on its own if you enjoy both great but you don't have to be a fan of like both the music and the comics you can enjoy the comics and not give a shit about metal music which would be obviously wrong but anyhow you don't have to be a fan of uh, that genre uh, and you can still enjoy the comics or if you think that the comics are too silly or like dumb then you can just enjoy the mu music and just not care about the cartoon imagery but uh, if you happen to like want to really gobble up everything there's a lot more to sort of uh, uh, learn and, and find out of the whole sort of Piazzabob's universe or whatever uh, and that's partly why uh, some of the band interviews also include uh, like data and information about their like uh, past and everything which is uh, it, there's always something new to uh, discover all right what lies ahead in Beelzebub's future Well, I hope the live gigs at least, and uh, yeah, let's see, like, uh, I'm just trying to keep my head down and keep pushing as much material as possible, so, um, but I really would like to see them, see them live, because I'm a fan of the, the band myself, of course. So, if after this interview we will find some new people interested in your art and work, where should they start to uh, exploration regarding Bills and Bobs? Maybe, uh, maybe join our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Bills official. Um, it might be difficult to like follow 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 the comic book uh, or comic strips through that but there's a, a link uh, to to the actual comics where you can like start from the beginning and stuff but it's it's the place where we uh, inform about uh, uh, like different events and uh, obviously publish the strips and, uh, and there's a, a good vibe there there are some 
we have an amazing fan base, which we call our cult. And uh, yeah, it, it's a it's a safe place for similar like uh, similar minded people. So the final thing would be. What kind of tip you would uh, like to give to people who are interested in drawing their own comics? Don't do it. <laughs> no. um, uh, I'd say that you need to find something that resonates in your heart and like you have a story that you are willing to invest your time in because it, it's it's fucking slow man so uh, yeah yeah think about the story what you want to tell how you want to tell it and then just try and have fun with it and not not take it too seriously this is an excellent excuse for us to conclude the interview the point being find something that resonates with your heart listen to your brain and don't try to overdo it all. Thank you for this interview. It Thank was you. nice to have you here. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, all you viewers out there, check out those links on the box below, where is the description. You will find the comic book strips there. And if you start to like them, consider investing some money for the physical product. Stay tuned for more Rauta stuff coming your way. Thank you. Kiitoksia.